should work. Okay. Well, it's stuck. It's broken. This is mouse. There we go. Oh. What are those comments? I don't know. Where are those comments from? I have no clue. I'm not sure either. I'm curious. Yeah. Oh, they, they might be. Matthias G. Is that how you say that? Can you send me a link to that exact match that you're referring to? That would be super helpful. Yes, Frosty is back in. Come in, let's go, baby. <laughs> Hello, Bob Jones. Wait, I gotta crack open the deck, so I'm gonna give it a couple minutes here. You gotta, you gotta stay hydrated. Oh. <laughs> Big whoa, whoa, what's up? Put that there, okay. Hey, Austin, Texas, nice. So I guess we're gonna start here. We'll give it probably three more minutes before we actually go. We gotta kind of start around the four or five minute mark. That way all the notifications go out and enough people kind of jump in. Oh, I gotta stretch though, it's been a while. <laughs> I yeah, know, we, we seven, did the seven weeks. Well, you got some real flexibility there. <laughs> There's some flexibility. Oh. Oh. My legs are killing me from that lunge circuit that I did on the, what was it, Friday when we did the live workout? Bit of an echo. Yeah, that's going to happen in this gym. It's got like 20 foot ceilings, and there's not much I can do about it. Um, let me check some of the settings here. <laughs> yeah. Turn it yeah. up, Mark. Oh, okay. So we're going to do just some BJJ takedowns, some nice, basic ones that I think everybody can do without a lot of athleticism. Okay. So we're just going to start uh, nice and easy kind of building into it. We're going to go nice, simple ankle pick to start. Okay. Based on movement here. So all we're going to do is we're just going to practice walking so that we're, there we go. We all got to walk together. There we go. Perfect. So we get that movement going so that we can walk and drop at that same time and get the ankle, okay? So basically for this type of ankle pick, if you got good judo, you're really good at gripping, you can do it while controlling the sleeve. So when he tries to grab your sleeve, right? Yeah, you can kind of work and prevent and get them to step so that you can get the ankle. It's hard to do and it's not something I recommend for a lot of beginners. The one I like is either four fingers, okay, making sure you can win the mercy battle here, or preferably the whole hand, okay, make sure that that thumb hooks the palm, because that's what's going to prevent him from really rolling his hand out. And then when you have that good control together, okay, as he takes that step, because you pull him, you drop that knee, this hand, the right hand has to snap diagonally across, so you can push him in the heart, and you can pick that foot up. Okay. From here, you could sit back into your X to take him down. You could step and throw. Any judo schools on Zoom that you recommend to join? Do you mean as like a brand new member? Or like to just kind of jump in and hang out? Um, I could probably recommend some schools that would sell you a membership to join their Zoom calls. <laughs> I wouldn't be one of them though. I don't teach judo. But so together, step. Drive, pick it up, catch that ankle, and then from here there's just a lot of different takedowns that you can do from this position. And then we're going to get into some more advanced kind of ankle picks and stuff like that, just because I think they're easy, um, and it's a little bit of old school judo, so I'm kind of used to it, okay? To make it a little bit more advanced, you could pull your opponent into a square stance, okay? So if he starts 
with that right foot forward and you're controlling this wrist, you obviously can't just go grab it, right? But one of the things you can do is you can spin and drop. So, there. And then you can snag that in, okay? So while we're in this position, I'm here. I'm just gonna turn that corner, okay? So I'm square. And then as I turn, I'm gonna pivot this knee to the floor. And when I do that, I pull him so that I can use my right hand actively where I pull him around and then punch up. Pull around, punch up. So if we change that angle a little bit so that you can see. Pull him right here. This is where I'm gonna punch up. There, see it gets that leg to take that step back so that he can't move the foot I'm really trying to attack. Oh, Daito, pizza and Daito, that's good. Up, pull, boom, catch that ankle. And then again, we can do a lot of like, ah, and then get a big takedown, okay? So back to the first one, building on it. Step and catch, more advanced, burn, push, catch that ankle, and it should be nice and easy. Does anybody have any questions? Could you use that same drop and pull for a drop of Ochi? Um, yes and no. So, to do a drop of Ochi, normally you do what's called a run step, okay? So normally in Judo we would shuffle. Okay, but one of the things the Italians are really good at is they run, so go right hand stance. They basically, instead of shuffling, they run past their partner. So they actually step in front and pull so that when you're here, you can drop and then you can hit that ochi and get that pull. So the steps are a little bit different. So I wouldn't have, wow, I am fat. Woo! <laughs> That's a lot of movement. Seven weeks. Man. Yeah. So you're not normally going to just shuffle and drop like I'm doing. You have to do it a little bit more aggressively where you run and lean, okay? Because that's what's going to get him to pull. Go ahead and hold on to that Now don't let it go. Let this go. It doesn't matter. Just don't let go. Sure. You wouldn't want to like run and have nothing happen, okay? One of the good things really good judo players do is they know how to use their torso and their shoulders to get a reaction and pull. So I got to get the D right. There we go. Okay, so now I can pull him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run and then I'm going to lean. There, and that's that pull where you could drop and then swing into that drop of drop Ochi. So by using, by using the body, William, right, plus the arm, but they have to come at two different times, right? So when you run and you pull, there's one initial pull, like you can start to see him, and then as I drop, there's that other pull so that I can hit him with that drop of Ochi, okay? We'll do that one, one more time for everybody. We'll give you a little bit more space here. So, again, run, and then pull with the body. Okay, my right arm is still straight here. Let's turn a little bit. There you go. Run, pull with the body. And then once you feel his foot come onto the air, that's when you pull with the right hand. Well, for me, right, the right hand. So, pull, there. Then you can hit that drop, pull, cheek. And now you can start attacking the position. And that's both judo and jiu-jitsu. Okay? It doesn't really matter which sport you're doing. It just matters that you gain that extra momentum with some fast feet. Whew, I gotta catch my breath for a minute. Any go-to Ashiwaza setups for Nogi? Yes. Taking them off? Ah, uh, no, because you'll see my gut. Okay, leave them on. Yeah, we don't want that. Yeah. There'll be some crazy Photoshop going on. Ugh, get that shoulder one. So, foot sweeps. No knee specifically, so no gripping. Okay? Your best friend is going to be a collar tie. Okay? And not for the sake of being able to have it, but when, you, when you're in this position and you can actually just sell clubbing your opponent, and again, not traditional wrestling, okay? Because if you're traditionally wrestling and you throw a collar tie and not defending that lead leg, he's gonna get in and take a shot, okay? So this is a guy that doesn't really wrestle, which is, you know, 99.999% of all jiu-jitsu players, you know, don't know how to wrestle, even at the highest level. Um, when you're in this position, 
you can afford to like change your stance right away and collar tie. And what that does is it gets him to kind of back up away from you. So boom, and then as he backs up, that's when you can pull his head and hit his foot at the same time, okay? Because when you run and push, he's not pushing you away like, yeah, push. Yeah, he'll naturally get a push as he goes away. And that's when that foot sweep's gonna come. So there, and you can hit him and you get that good pull on his head. So even if you don't play from a traditional like tie up position, I always like to punch, push my, change my feet, push it on his head, turning him, pulling him. And then when I'm in this position, I can change his stance by getting some motion with his head, okay? William, I'm glad that's what you were looking for. That's why we're here. So if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to throw them out here. That's why we're here, just to answer your guys' questions and move along. You got some dust, actually. Well, it's been a while. McGee has not, not come off the shelf in a bit. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's pretty much my no D like off the grip kind of foot sweep is as I'm moving the head and changing my stance left to right, I tend to like to move move his head all the time. Okay? And then I can time that foot sweep as we're as we're playing and as we're moving the head. And as you're moving the head, try to start picking up your own chest position. Okay, I know he could take a shot from there. But as I pick up my head, they pick up their head a little too much. Back of the neck, solid foot sweep. High, high. I feel like that's the second time I've said that. I think you were here the other day. Why not right ahead? The other, my other like go-to tachi was, and we'll do this one for geek too, just because I think it's pretty relevant. Posting on the chest. Happens all the time in fat guy jiu-jitsu, okay? Double collar post on the chest, whatever you got going on, you're like, and guys are like, and they're like, they don't, they don't know what to do, and they're afraid to pull guard because they don't know how to break down that arm. So we're gonna go over just breaking down the arm and into one of my easy just coaches. So we're gonna go one post first, just so that you guys can see what's going on. It's important that when you're dealing with a stiff arm, that you create like a T piece. So while he has it, I'm gonna lean on it so that my legs are kind of light. And then he's gonna lean on it. You can see our bodies are kind of coming up to a point because we're leaning against that hand, okay? I don't wanna stand up here and try to use my arms. I wanna use my body and my legs, the meat of my legs, to push on him, okay? Opposite hand here is gonna come up so I can grab by that elbow. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna shrug. Okay, notice that my shoulder, you can see my black key above his very pasty white arm. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> up, up and above it. Okay, so I'm shrugging that shoulder up as I do this. He's got a good strong post, I'm leaning on it. I come up, and as I shrug, my hand drapes. I'm not grabbing the key. Don't get physical with people. Drape it, use technique first, and then turn. And you can kind of see it pulls by into a good Russian. Like normally if I was doing no key, I would come here into my Russian, he wouldn't be holding on, and I'd be hanging out here, okay? But he'll normally be hanging on in the gi. So when we're in this position, step into it, turn that shoulder, hand comes down the back. Grab the belt, grab the gi, anything you can. On the opposite side of the body, okay, like a seat belt. You wanna be able to control his body here, okay? The belt, I'm not usually a fan of for jujitsu because Jiu-Jitsu people don't know how to tie their belt. And it spins in a circle, okay? Wow. It's not good, like my belt don't spin. Well, it has something to do with how you tie it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, nice, solid grip, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip step. And then in and pressure, okay? The skip step is to just get to them to like sink their weight a little bit. You're trying to sell the idea that you're going to jump forward. But all you're going to do is like a lateral bound, push and spring off of it. So there's no rhyme or reason as to where you jump to. As long as you feel like you have a good drive to jump past and through him and run him over. So when you're in this position and that foot is forward, don't just lean you're too far away. Gain some momentum and drive through. It doesn't even matter that you sweep the foot because it's your upper body crushing his arm down and then pushing 
that's going to get him to come down and you land in a good like knee cut style position. What's Chris saying? What does that mean? What's that last word? Low jigatai, please. I'm assuming you mean like a low stance, like squatting and pressing up. Can you clarify that, Chris? Shigoro's Tayo. Tai. Why does that name sound familiar? <laughs> Which one? Right there. Oh. Urinagi setups for BJJ. Tai! Not cool, dude. Um, not cool. So, Urinagi is a dangerous movement just in jujitsu in general because they have really weak necks. They're not used to you know, catching the floor with their heads. So like they're not really developed like wrestlers and judo players. So when I'm able to get into this back position here, okay, you can even go with her, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. What I like to do is I like to take this hook here. Where my, turn this way a little bit. Yeah, there's pretty good. Right. There, so that my foot hooks the outside, but then I take my knee and I put it on the inside. Okay? It's one of my, it's like kind of like just one of my go-to grips. So even if I can come out and I can steal that sleeve, I like to throw it and then get in nice and tight, okay? Because when I'm leaning on this and I'm pressing him, I can pull him in tight, I can back step there, and I can throw him off to that side. And that hook works really well for jujitsu in particular because he can't jump back the other way. So when we're in this position, and I take that hook here where I'm leaning on him. When I sit here, he can't jump to this other side, okay? Even if he does, and he somehow like, <laughs> oh, oh, no, we gotta do that again. <laughs> Let's assume that he, he somehow miraculously, no, just check out that would be a little easier. Let's assume that he just like jumps. It's okay, because I can pass my head out, I can throw that hook in, and now I can start working. William, yeah, it means defensive posture, but like what's defensive? Because to me, this is defensive. Like hips in, no attacking. Or does he mean like defensive, like stiff arm? Or does he mean like defensive, like stiff arm? They all have different options. Um, oh, I think I've lost weight. My pants are coming down. Looks like you're just done. No, 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 no. Pants are loosening up. I lost like three pounds during this, during this course. Uh, hola Iker. Iker. DQ. I don't know what that means either. All I think about when I see DQ is ice cream. Dairy Queen, let's go. Kami Basami scissor takedown. Banned in competition BJJ like judo. Yes, it is banned in judo. What would you recommend from a pummel position? So you're talking like this, right? Where you're, you have an underhook and you have an overhook. Um, traditionally, for me, I'm, I'm all, I'm all in in this vision. I love this, especially against you, uh, BJJ guys because they don't know how to really wrestle, so they don't really know what they're doing from here. They're just kind of pushing into each other. But when here, there's a couple of options. If you're in the gi, I like the belt in Tokochi. So when I pull, I take his heart. And I put it over this leg, this leg. Yeah, I'm backwards in the camera here. So that the leg that's in front when I'm here, thank you, William, I'll get to that. Hold on to this tricep, and now look, circle. And there, you see how I got him to take that back step? I use my shoulders to get that motion, okay? So I turn my chest, and then I pull down hard with my overhook, and then turn it over. Okay, and as I do that, I take my inside leg and I hook. There, and I can lay him down, and now I can start to work because I have the underhook on the far side. So that's one of my more like, you know, favorite things. If I'm getting a little bit more like fancy with it, I'll work on a foot sweep where I'll hit a sasai, but the sasai isn't there to take him down. What I really want to throw him with is my foot sweep. So I'm going to hold on to the upper body, like back your hips up. Yeah, like let's say he's kind of far away. Okay, we're going to hit the side to stand him up. Boom, and then once he stands up, 
my hand comes to the inside part of the bicep so that I can press it through as, as I hit his feet out from him, okay? So while we're in this position, his butt is gonna be back. I'm gonna stand him up. Now that he's up, I can press here and I can hit him with a foot sweep. So from the over under position, that's usually my go-to. Sumo squats, he sends his more bent forward. So yeah, if he's double collar here and he's bent over, this is what I'm assuming. William, can you give me a thumbs up or something in the chat so I know that this is what you're talking about? Yeah, defensive posture, bending over. You just feel like you can't, you can't get to him, right? I'm gonna go with yeah. There might be a delay here and I'm kind of lazy. You're welcome, Michael. Okay, so when we're in this position, I'm a right-handed judo player, so my right foot is always forward because I throw in this direction, okay? So when he's got this low stance, that right hand comes inside, okay? And it doesn't, ideally I would come all the way through and then be in a good solid position, but we can't do that because my partner is bigger than me and stronger than me, which is why I can't just pull him in. So I'm gonna go on top with one hand, I'm gonna take my right hand, and I'm gonna come underneath, okay? And now that I have that gripping position, go ahead and stiffen up nice and strong, strong as you got there. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my elbow and then I'm going to drop my elbow like I'm steering a big car. Okay, so when he's in this position, what I want to do, hold on one second, stay, no, stay in that stance though, back that foot up, there. He has an off balance point to this center in the front, okay? Not straight on, it's going to be forward, okay? Let me grab a white belt right here. Every school's got white belt playing around. So his straight line, where his heart is pointing is down this line. But his off balance point is over here at the angle. Let's do it this way. You guys see the floor? No, this way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so his off balance point is actually up here on this side of the line. So when he has that double posture grip, your angle is more important than your strength. Okay, technique overall. So I'm underneath with my right, and then I'm gonna steer that wheel. Okay, my left hand's gonna pull in, my right hand's gonna lift. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull him to that angle, off to the side, to keep that stiff, nice and stiff, nice and stiff there. So I pull to keep his front leg where it is, and then I change my angle. There, and you can see that his head position is changed so that I can come in and do karai, uchimata, anything of that nature. So we're here, he stiffens up, we get some tension, and then we just change that angle. I back step, there and I can hit my throw or my takedown, okay? It's all about the angle and making sure you find the right one. Don't just fight brute strength to brute strength. Unless, you know, if you're like me and you're stronger than most people you go against. <laughs> then it's okay. Nogi Osoto. Um, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. It's a, it's a risky move. But for me, I like to do it with my partner then. So, no, I'll wait, I'll wait. Yeah, like he takes his shot and he'll take, yeah. And I can grab that back lat, I can grab that, I can get that leg to the outside, throw, jump to the other side, and then keep his head sucked in. Okay, that's usually mine, but I don't want to go too much um, into detail about that, just because it's very complicated and it's a very niche, niche throw that doesn't service a lot of people here. William, I'm glad you like that. You're an older player, and what's a good, safe option for jiu-jitsu? Pulling guard. Um, for me, the, the safest option is always that ankle pick. It's why I started with the ankle pick, okay? One hand on the gi, turn, get the ankle. But if you need something a little bit more advanced than just a straight up, like, I'm going to grab the guy's ankle, okay? Cross grip. Cross grip, okay? What you need to do with this cross grip though is you need to block the line of sight. So if I say Frosty, how many fingers I got up? Three. Now I have no idea. But He's got no. Know. TV, it's three. Yeah. <laughs> I'm blocking his line of sight, okay? So notice I didn't yank him off his balance, okay? It's super important that everybody understands how to use the gi jacket to their den. So when I cross grip, 
I defend the hand, meaning I'm not squeezing it. I'm guiding it, okay? I'm just making sure he can't get to me. So wherever, wherever he puts it, I'm okay with it. Because I'm going to snap that D and block his line of sight. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it. That's what's going to give me that shot into his leg and then up into the body when I'm ready to take him down. Okay, so we're here. We change that stance, boom, here. The right hand is super important because it controls the head. So when I'm in this position, snap, and now right here, I turn that D jacket to turn away. So when he tries to look at me, that jacket's in the way. That's what lets me get to that leg. And then I can pick it up, and now I can take him down by any means, okay? So it's super simple, super easy. We just come out, we grab, we guide that hand, snap, turn, get to that leg, take him down with anything you want. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And for everybody tuning in right now, if you guys didn't know, Fuji Sports is like 30% off right now. So make sure you check that out after the live stream. Get yourself some fresh new gear like he did. Brand new out of the bag today. So does anybody have any other questions, comments, concerns? Scott, I'm glad that works for you, man. Super simple, super easy. As long as you can move your feet, you're good to go. Good counters to Ogoshi. There's a, there's a good one. Uh, don't, don't get there. That's like step one. Don't, don't get there in Ogoshi. Because if you're in Ogoshi, step one, don't get thrown. Step two, don't get thrown. Step three, don't get thrown. There's not a good option when he's, you're right, he still wants on the other side. <laughs> There's not a lot of good options when he throws his hips across to you like able to do much of anything, okay? Once he's in on it anyway. But what you can do, no, keep that, keep that grip, keep that grip. This is important, yeah. okay? Look at his shoulder. See how it's right here in my chest and there's no space? What I want to do is roll my hip back and stand up. Now I have space between here and the shoulder. I don't want to be here, okay? So when I'm in this position and I'm ready to counter, I want to bump him with my shoulder. Here, bump him. And then I'm going to scoot so that he wants to do a goshi. But when he turns his hips in now, I can counter because that arm is weak. It's not connected to the body, okay? So when we're in this position and you feel like he's going to come across, okay, you have to be offensive here. Don't let them do it, okay? Offensive minded all the time. So when you bump him, when you bump him, stand up. And now when he goes to bring that hip across, you can trap that arm and you can hit that back leg for a takedown. So we'll just do it once here really quick. Turn this a little bit. There you go. So when he's in this position and he goes for that big hip curl, boom, I stand up. I hook that leg, and we bring him down, okay? Again, if you're doing jiu-jitsu and he feels nervous and he lets go, I like this option because when he lets go, because he feels you coming across, you end up on the back, but you still have this. So you can tap this hand and then trip him, just basic high school, middle school wrestling, okay? Single sleeve tile. You're talking about off the grip, right, Chris? So he basically grabs you. We're doing jujitsu and he tries to come across. All right, yeah, back gets uh, tired. He's like, he's like a white belt in judo. Yeah. Yeah, there ah, you go. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Give me some credit. Okay. Step, Step number one. one. That's a champ. It should never happen because your right hand should always be in good position. Okay? So when he comes across and tries tile, go ahead. He can't, my hand ends up with a forearm that he can't get through. Okay, go ahead. There, and, and we kind of get stuck. He's actually, notice he's hitting me backwards because my hand, when he hits it, it bumps me backwards, which is the opposite direction of the throw. So if I take this hand and I move it just a few inches that way, and then he goes, and I flex, he can actually get that full rotation, and he can take me down. So to defend the one-handed tile, that right hand has to be dead center to the body. Don't leave that part exposed. Always shut it off and stay on that side. Any tips for sacrifice throws? Pick a sacrifice throw. There's too many variations. We can talk sumi, tomonagi, uranagi, take the room, and we can talk a whole bunch of sacrifices. Best takedown for arm bar setup. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I hope everybody's paying attention. 
Make sure you timestamp this in your mind, okay? So I want everybody to come back to this because this will be tricky and you'll throw a lot of people with it, okay? Be a little scary, but if you practice it, you'll smash some people. Here we go. There's no halfway here. You go for it. Go for broke. Here we go. Okay, we're going to come out. I'm going to cross grip his sleeve, okay? Follow me here. I'm going to cross grip his sleeve, and then I'm going to turn my back to him so that he grabs it. Boom, there, she's feeling comfortable. She's feeling super, super comfortable, okay? But what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna come across and I'm gonna grab his knee jacket. Either collar works just fine, okay? Whatever you can get a hold of, but you want it high on the chest, okay? Nipple line, you want it higher. Take that grip. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swing and I'm gonna chop his leg out, okay? I'm not gonna cross full tie over here, okay? I'm going to come across, I'm going to chop, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duck my head out, and look at my hand here. I'm going to sweep his leg up, bring him back, catch that arm, finish that arm off. Okay, this works great, judo or BJJ, but more so for the BJJ guys, because they don't really see it coming. So when we're in this position, you basically punch it, okay? When you grab it, don't just leave it here. Punch it. Make him take your back, so that you can steal this hand. Back step, chop, pop underneath, bring him down, hook that arm, finish that arm bar. Okay, time stamp that. Come back and watch it. Come back and watch it. Hey, look at that. People beautiful. like it. Beautiful. People like it. I love it. Trips to the trade. Oh. Doug, throw for a BJJ class with strikes happening. Are you talking about MMA class? You gotta figure out what you're talking about there. Diet Coke, drink of champions. Don't <laughs> let anybody tell you different. I feel like I should do that one one more time. That was a cool one. Yeah. So punch across, get them to make that commitment, collar grip, back step, chop through. Pop that head out of the hole. Run, 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 run. Boom. Step up, step up, break it, and then laugh at him for catching him with it. But, but, you BJJ people, you have to be careful, okay? I have knocked people out with this technique because people do not see it coming, okay? What tends to happen with people who of like, the lesser intelligence when it comes to like stand up throwing techniques. Okay. Switch, switch, switch. When this happens, what tends to happen is when you chop their leg out, they try to sprawl. So when they sprawl and you pull, their face is going to smack the floor. Okay. So don't sprawl. Don't sprawl when people do this to you. Don't do it. You're going to hit your face on the mat, then you're going to go, Travis Stevens told me to, and then I'm going to go, I don't know what to tell you. Go back and watch the video. So don't do that. Face plant, yeah, pretty much. I've knocked people unconscious with it. It's not good. I don't feel bad for it. They should have taken the fall, but you know. Oh, Doug, I understand what you're saying. You're going back to like old school MMA where like they're actually striking and like jujitsu is more of like a combat style sport. I mean, I'm a big fan of double legs. like. Cut the angle, blast double, okay? Seems like everybody likes the tricky stuff. That catches everybody, forget the basics. It's always the tricky stuff. Gotta make it look good. Ha. Ah. Ha, ah, the tricky stuff. Anybody got any other questions? <laughs> I like that even more. <laughs> Yeah, so here's, a, here's actually a simple one for everybody, okay? Gi, no gi, doesn't matter, okay? And it'll be a little tricky, okay? I think I've actually made a YouTube video on this like four years ago. Um, but again, so if you want to catch a BJJ guy off guard, okay, off guard now, here's what you're going to do. You're going to trick him. You're going you're gonna to do the like April Fools. You're going you're to walk out there. And you're going to go, look, I don't know anything about takedowns, and this is what you do. Okay, you put your feet together like this, 
and then you bend and you go like this and you waddle and you waddle out there like this. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like all you guys who are here, again, timestamp this one, okay? Timestamp this one. You're going to love it because you're going to smash some people with it, okay? Because they're going to see your feet together. They're going to see your hands in. Remember, what, what is this guy doing? What is this guy doing? Hey, I got you with the cross collar grips in a second, okay? But here's what you're going to do. Whatever side you like to like jump and go, you're going to reach out with that hand. I like stepping up with my left leg and then jumping in with my right. So here we go. I'm going to walk it across and I'm going to go like this. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of reach my hand out here like I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not going to reach up because then it gets physical, right? You're going towards his head. You don't want to do that. I kind of just want to reach out. Like I just want to touch them. Like I'm trying to gauge distance a little bit, right? And what they're going to do is they're just going to reach out and they're going to grab it. Yeah. And even jujitsu guys who pull guard, this works really well against because they don't grab you. They cat's paw the gi, which is great. You're going to smash some people, I'm telling you. So you walk out, and he cat paws that, and you go, love it. And then what you do is you get nervous. You get nervous, right? Like You just suck it back a little bit. But you don't move your feet. Don't move your feet. Just suck it back. And then you're going to go. You're going to slide. Look at that. Look how nice that is. You slide, you bounce up. One, two, arm back, blast him. Blast him with a double. I'm telling you. Hey, super chat for a dollar. Thank you, William. I love it. I'm buying me some coffee later. But here you go, here you go. Watch, watch. Just like this, he grabs it, you slide. You slide, you arm drag, no grip. But because he's holding on, he gets that arm popped off right here. Big step through the center. Bang, hit him. High in the leg, block that leg, step through, blast him. I'm telling you, you will take people down with that. Okay, I'm telling you. Just walk out there. Boom, he takes that grip, chop him. Big high grip, run them over. Brilliant. I cannot tell you how many people I have laid out with that technique. From white belt D1 wrestlers to like black belt level BJJ guys. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. And when you get really good at it, you can pull one of these. Oh, no, keep it, keep it. No, keep it. now I'm freaked out. Keep it, keep it. Right. It's like, you can't. I can't. And then you blast them. I'm telling you. It's great. It's great. Okay, but we had a cross grip defense, okay? So Frosty cross grips me. We got to change sides for this. So he's got a good cross grip, and you're like, ah, what do I do? Right? Super simple. You blast them. No. Okay, so same side collar for me. Right? He's got a cross grip. So that would be a mirrored grip, okay? So he's cross gripping me and I'm here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do three step motion. Inside my own gi jacket, like I'm drawing a bow right now. Boom, I pop it off. Okay, now that's one. Two is the grip switch here. And then I move him. Three is the stab to the ankle pick again. Okay, James with the super chat. I love it. Thank you. But here we go. Here we go. He cross grips you right here. Post. Draw that bow. Move to the side, right? Move to the side. Boom. Over the top. Oh, don't come here because he can grab that sleeve with that hand. Over the top. Okay? Now I'm going to move to my back side, to his back side like I'm trying to take it. As I do that, he'll face me to not get his back taken. Look at his feet. Punch. Boom. Get that ankle to come up. Lay him out as hard as you can. Okay, that's my, that's kind of like my cross grip defense 101 when it comes to BJJ. Judo is a little bit different though. Don't do that in judo. Okay, because you'll get thrown. But BJJ with the skill level isn't that high when we talk about being on our feet. Um, it works like a charm. They're so afraid of getting their back taken that they face you and they forget about where their feet placement are and you can smash them. That's Marky, right? Marky Coleman, thank you. I'm glad you like it. I feel like I'm looking at the TV and not at you guys because I got to read the questions. I'll just stare at them and you can read the questions. That way you don't <laughs> feel left out. It's going to get weird real soon. Okay, I don't know who asked it because it's above the feet. John Harris. Is that the one? No, but I see a, I see a Marote saying, I'll give practical application. Okay. 
So let's go over drop sail for jujitsu, okay? And you're not gonna like my answer because it's a stupid throw. But there's a right time and a wrong time to do it. And I'm gonna show you guys kind of a more effective way to not, not let's not focus on the takedown. Let's think about jujitsu as a whole and where it's better to be in the right position. So what we're gonna do, uh, cross grip or no cross grip? I got a bad shoulder, so I'm gonna go cross grip just because it's a little easier for me and I'm fat and out of shape, but you know. You can do it from here, it's no different. It's actually better from this side. But again, fat and out of shape. Okay, so I have my two grips. Traditionally, you would drop, and then all you BJJ guys do it. I don't know. I don't know who taught you. I don't know where it came from, but you look stupid doing it. Don't do this. Don't bend, and then put your forehead on the floor, and then try to like climb up. Don't, there's no power. There's no explosion. There's no lift. You want to drive, and you want to lay somebody out. Okay, so you got to get your butt off your heels once you drop. But I digress. I kind of got off on a tangent there. Sorry. Back to the original throw. So that's traditionally, you would drop into the center to take him down. But what's better, what's better for you is to actually over-rotate the position, okay? So stand with your square stance, and then kind of split yourself on this line here between these mats. Uh, let's do it this way. Yeah, that's a, that's a clear line, right? You guys can see that line with different shades of the tatami. So center, kind of bend at the waist center. Center is forward this way, okay? But what I'm gonna do, is when I drop, I'm going to put my butt to the outside of this leg. Here, and then here. Because now what I'm going to do is when I... No, no, don't go down. Don't go down. Ah, stay up, stay up. such a good throw. I no, that was, that was a... <laughs> People don't fall for that. <laughs> but what they will fall for is this, where you can shrug, pop your head out, and now you can be on the back. Okay? So if he gives me some resistance where he's like, I'm just not going to get thrown. Right? If I, if I start pulling him around and he doesn't want to get thrown, when I drop, there, we fall here because my right hand yanks him down to the ground. I can pop my head out and now I can be on his back. So again, uh, let's go this way. Yeah, more in line with the hand back up to the wall. There we go. So here, when I drop, there, you can see my head pops out. But this is the key grip because when he goes to stand up, you know, when I lean, I can push him down to the mat with it because it's stuck in his armpit. You can drag him down and you can hug the weight through your points. Thumbs up. I like it. I saw it. I don't know to put that thumbs down, but <laughs> you can there's one. Here. I love it. They got thrown. You know who it was? It was the guy who got thrown with that like hand tie under the arm bar. He didn't like the jiu-jitsu comment. No, he did not. What is that? Ten dollars from Michael J. Thank you, Michael J. I think that's a super chat thing. Is it normally it's a different color? Know. Anyways. If it is, thank you. Um, I saw something in there about a wrestling stance. If somebody wants to go back and re-ask that so I can see it. But Marky Coleman, do you like Katagruma for BJJ? I love it. I love it. Hit people with it all the time. And my favorite grip to do it from is this one. That big one. Yep. See this, like when he's wearing a gi, do you see this like, no, no, you can't look. Oh, come on, let me just see. Yeah. Right here, there's like this little flap right here, and it's on both sides, like where the gi kind of bunches. This is like my like go-to grip for firing. I, I've done, even in judo, that's my grip. I love it, okay? Nick, we're doing it right now, so you just got here in time. We're going over my favorite firing for BJJ. Now. When we're in this position, so go ahead and get in like a wrestling or like, yeah, BJJ stance. When we're like this, okay, heavy hands, heavy hands, boom, like, like he should like, he should like feel you like, there, see how I get that pull? Just like in wrestling with a tie, you want to be able to move him with it. Same thing with the key, you want to be able to move him with it right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice my hand, oops, I'm going to slice it between his body, okay? I'm not just gonna shoot through, okay? When I come through in this position, I'm going through the hand. That way my head can fit to that hole. And now look, I'm gonna transition the weight. 
There. So that most of it's on my right side. That's what's going to allow me to explode up and finish that cake down with my legs. Okay? No gi against taller opponents. I see you. Turn this way. There we go. Okay. So when we're in this position, when you're dropping through here, boom, shoulder and head attached to the thigh. Okay? A lot of people come up to the waist, and now when Frosty kicks that leg back, no, 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 you're turning. Don't crucifix. Just uh -huh. throw that. Kick your leg, and you can't, you can't hold it, right? But if he stands back up, and you can attach yourself down here, now Frosty, there. See, you get that lift so that you can stand up, and now you can drop him even with just the one hand, okay? So for judo, for BJJ, there you go, Marky. There it is. Don't go too high on the thigh. Traditionally, that's how people teach it. I personally do not. I don't like it. I'm not that strong, so that's BS. So yeah. <laughs> but we're in this position. When you drop in, boom, connection. Down, hand extends to get him over. Put your hands on the floor. There, that way when he plays defense, right? He's light. You should be able to stand up, no problem. Turn that ankle through and then jump back and break his ankle. Don't even wait for the tap, just break it. Super chat. Omega Supreme. Love it. <laughs> Respect for being a Viking Luke. Let's go, Love baby. Thank you, sir. Can't do it alone. I feel like I saw a technique and then I got excited about the fireman's and I missed it. I think you got to Venmo me that five bucks. I'll do it. <laughs> I don't have Venmo, but we'll figure it out. Actually, I might. I think I paid a photographer in Venmo once. You got a way to do the thing. No gi against taller opponents. There it is. Okay. No gi, taller opponents. Oh, the one for judo. No, I can't do it. BJJ channel. Can't do it. But in the judo thing, on Wednesdays and Sundays, I'll show you a judo version. Balloon sweep, we're doing takedowns. Maybe he means like tamoy. Then he wouldn't have said sweep, right? Uh, or is that just me being anal? I don't know. I'm trying to give him a okay. little bit of a No gi against taller guys, okay? Traditionally speaking, taller guys like to use their length meaning they're reaching out and they're trying to touch you, okay? So if I'm down here and he's reaching, he's touching my head, my shoulders, like you just feel like you can't, you can't get at him, right? Because he's taller, oh, the soda, it's getting to him. <laughs> what you're gonna do is a snap down, level change, go, okay? And basically what that means is when he puts it, put both hands on your shoulders, there you go, just for practice purposes, no thumbs, just so I don't hurt him, yeah. When he's here, you're gonna lean on him so that he's here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna drape your hand, and now we're gonna snap. And when we snap, we go down, and we drop to our back leg. There, that way I can take a penetration step, and now I can blast, pause, and bring him down to the floor, okay? So normally, I like to snap and go with taller guys, because they tend to fall over a little bit, so if me and him are actually working and walking when I'm here, I like to change that stance, boom. There, you can see that stumble that he had forward, and you can hit him, and you can blast that double. Uh, for BJJ, it's tricky, because you got to watch out for those guillotines. So, you can always cartwheel over to the other side when you finish your double, or you could blast double um, and hit him right in the heart. For me, for me, I almost always shoot doubles off the arm drag into the double because by the time he comes around to my neck, he's usually on the floor or I'm down on his ankles trying to bring him down to the ground. Travis, any good ways to prevent your opponent from going pulling guard? No. Pull first. <laughs> no. If he wants to pull, he's going to pull like, I mean, I see guys like halfway on the floor before they grab the knee and they're trying to snag it. Ah, uh, yeah, but Adolfo's drop sale isn't real. Like, he just beats people with it because he fights people that aren't good on their feet. So you want to make sure that you actually train, like, a proper one where you learn how to, like, snap and move the gi and 
use the whip in order to throw. He's basically just ganking on it. People are getting nervous, and then he's falling over, right? You always want to follow the rule of thumb, right? Like, you don't want to beat an idiot. You want to beat intelligent people. So do things right. Plan on beating the best people in the world with every technique. Don't just do it because Joe Schmo did it and he got it to work, right? You want to make sure you follow fundamental principles. Don't, like, we can't just, like, yank on the gi as hard as we can and then drop and then think he's going to go over. Like, that's not real. If it was real, you would see high-level judo players just yanking on the gi and then dropping. Because judo players are a lot stronger than BJJ guys in general, just physically, because we're a stand-up sport that pushes and pulls a little bit more. Uh, Uchimata can work. I personally don't do it as like its own takedown. I always do it, babe, wow, wow, off of some sort of like additional thing. So if I'm going to do an Uchimata, for example, I'll always Uchimata to ankle kick and then finish the throw that way. I'll always Uchimata, oh, Uchi back the other way to finish the takedown, okay? So I'll use Uchimata to get in, but then I'll finish with something else. SG, a slam, is anytime you pick somebody up off the floor that is already on the floor and you throw them as hard as you can or drop them. That includes escaping an arm bar. Like I one time yes. picked a guy up off the ground and literally just pulled my arm out and he fell on the ground and I got DQ. Yeah. You got to control your partner. This is a stupid rule. Stupid. You shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be able to let them try to break your limb while protecting them. It <laughs> seems counterintuitive. Like he's hurting me. Andrew, you missed it, so go back into the timestamp where I go over, drop Sanagi, and how I over-rotate to bring the head down and climb up to the back. Like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. My favorite combo for Harai is Osoto. Always will be Osoto, because if I'm on the back of his neck, and I'm here, go ahead and post on my chest. Yeah. If I'm here, nope, there we go. I want inside, I always gotta win. I gotta get in like the best possible position. But when you're here and you want to throw her eye, don't just blast him, okay? Notice that this leg is forward. So if I try to do Osoto, he'll back up. And there, now he's on his toes. Nope, stand up, stand up. Just take a step back. There you go. And now look, you can see that he's on his toes just by the act of him stepping back. So what you try to do is you try to blast him. Ah, and he steps out. Boom, okay. Relax, relax. We're trying to show it. I want to hurt him. Boom. And blast you. Okay. So, you, you come in and you try to do Osoto. He's gonna step out, oh, okay, okay. You might even have to do it again, right? All you big heavyweight, you know, the, the 35 and older, like bigger guys that go to IBJJS and you feel like you get to here and you can't take them down, try Osoto, ah, he steps out, oh, okay. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna just lift your leg and then when he goes to step, you're gonna pivot and that's what's gonna give you that head arm and sweeping position, okay? So basically when you're doing judo, what it would look like is lift and then sweep. Uchimata, Harai, all those throws will work off that combination. It's probably one of my favorites. Yes, you can do it Nippon Sanagi and it ends up in a gator roll for judo that you could throw. It's actually in my Mastering Sanagi instructional on judo fanatics. So you guys can check that out. Little plug in there. Go buy my stuff. Kochi Kosoto to single leg scoop. Yeah, we did that at the very beginning, okay? Where basically, we did a step back into it. We did a rotation into a punch into it. Okay, we've done about two or three, so you can go back uh, when this is over and kind of check that out. Very beginning. Yeah, very beginning. I think that was the first thing I showed. Brent, I'm glad you like it. You're welcome. We got about five minutes here, guys. So any other questions? Anything else you want to see that we haven't already done or gone over? Hey, thank you for buying the Newa Newaza Mastery to take down Blueprint. I hope you like it. That Newaza Mastery took me like two weekends. It took like 48 hours of filming. We were doing like 12 hour days. Favorite no-gi combination. Okay, head movement first. Head movement first. So he's in his wrestling stance, pose. Post, post, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna swipe. One, two, 
into my front headlock, okay? And now my head is gonna sweep. As I do that, I sweep in on that leg and I catch a single, okay? That's my favorite nogi. I get the head moving a little bit and then I sweep into that single. So one more time. Post, defend the front leg. Post, defend the front leg. Post, defending that front leg. Post, defending that front leg. Sweep, drop that knee. Pick the leg up and figure it out from the single. Sometimes it's double, sometimes it's running the pipe, sometimes we thread through. Any takedowns into leg locks. My favorite one, okay, into leg locks is probably into a straight ankle because I was more of a D guy. But I love cross gripping, okay? And then what I do is I chase the ankle because I like ankle picks. I chase that ankle. When he steps back, I slide. My foot goes behind that knee. I make that third person step into my X. And from here, we can either knock him down, bring that leg up, bring him down, bring him down here. And then we can step over and into that straight ankle because it gets good and tight when you pull into that X. But yeah, that's probably my favorite, is just chasing, chasing, chasing. Boom, hit him, bring him down. Right here, it's super tight. That knee comes through, we post on that hip, and we break it. Um, Marky, I've never really had a reason for watching Kitami. It seems like a ridiculous and stupid move. Um, just percentage-wise of getting it, versus trying to understand it. Rob, I'm glad you like it. Hopefully you come back and re-watch this. You know, when the dojos open up and you guys get to have a training partner again to really try to understand and practice the movements. Like less than not a lot of judo. Um, if I could teach one foot sweep, kind of generally across the board, it would be a step on the foot foot sweep. So, put your ears. No, nope, other one. There we go. So same, same stance, right? What I would do is I would step in with my back leg and I would cheat step so that I could reach and I could get close to him. And notice my foot is up. So that when my body pressures him, he steps back and then I can sweep that leg out as we go, okay? So essentially you're here, you bring that foot in, you step, and then you sweep out both his legs. It's in another one of my YouTube videos. I can't for the life of me figure out what it's called with the thumbnails of a guy like chest level getting laid out. So you could go find that. When you soccer kick the guy? No, no, that was different. That was different. <laughs> he said one foot sweep. Ah, valid. Yeah, the other one was four. How about a fail or fake sale to single leg? Yeah, I mean, I used to do that, um, dropping down just to get to that ankle. Um, are you asking about how you handle it or how you do it? Star Lord, the snap down against the taller player. I don't know what that was. What I think, uh, it's like a wood line proctor thing. So, nope, just on the chest. So, all we're doing is we're leaning, hands come to the wrist, and then what I do is you, you lean back against it, there, and then you can penetrate and you can get to his legs. Uh, and that's what I do against, you know, taller guys for the most part. The other thing you could try is uh, high crotch on the side he reaches to. So, you know, most BJJ guys could do this. So if he's a good wrestler, he's not going to do it. But a lot of BJJ guys do it where they reach out with their lead hand to try to post or collar tie or do whatever. So one of the things you could do is you could actually pop that hand up to get to that high crotch to then get to the body. Because they didn't really learn how to like properly wrestle. So you see people all the time like reaching and posting, not defending that lead leg. So if he ever reaches out, like you could always penetrate and get to the body that way. How would I do it? Okay, so the way I used to do it is drop sail. So I used to do it against lefties more than righties. So he's inside. Um, normally what you would do is you would take one step all the way through. So there, and then you can get to that ankle. Because they're gonna circle out and away and you want that to happen. So all you're trying to do is bump this leg out of the way so that when you slide, you take one step down and in, you're here. Now this hand can drive through 
and you can get to that ankle. Okay, so that's how I would set up my ankle pick. But that's all we have time for for today. Everybody, thank you guys for stopping by. And if you guys found this, I do remember. <laughs> I also remember I lost that match. Stupid scores. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully everybody learned something. If you did, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It would mean a lot. And thank you to all the community members who are here. Omega Super Cheese is one of them. Thank you guys for being channel members and supporting the channel. So that's all we have time for for today. So thank you. Until tomorrow. Tomorrow's the fitness class. Make sure you show up. Like, whoa, whoa. I'm glad you guys liked it. Oh, when's the next class? What did we say? Uh, I think Thursday. It's a Thursday night. Thursday, 8.30. More jujitsu stuff. Bye-bye.